bum 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 ba -dum, bum No, you and I were never taught anything important in school. We weren't. I never learned anything in college. I say anything, most anything. I spent all my time in the library. You know, I knew for a fact that irreducibly that the idiots trying to teach me and trying to teach you were incomparable subhuman knuckle dragging apes compared to the people long since dead that uh, filled the halls of the library. People like Plotinus, Demetius, Numenius, Proclus, Syrianus, on and on and on. Mostly Greeks, 30% Indian, Advaita Vedanta, the works of Shisankaracharya, uh, Radha Krishna, Nanani Kitish Kumara Swami, uh, the uh, 13 principal Upanishads, the Briyadranyaku Upanishad, and the rest. Um, stuff in the ancient uh, Prakrit Pali, which I translate, and I translate ancient Greek as well. There's one thing Eric Dollar, Eric Dollar is a really simple guy. He cusses a lot, and I know I'm not making fun of him. He just wants to be left alone. You know, he's a bearded guy, looks like a grumpy Santa Claus. Lives out in the desert. He just wants his equipment to experiment with, and he writes books. He's not trying to get rich. He's not trying to screw anybody over. He lives a simple life, basically like an electronics monk. He wants his equipment, and he wants to be left the hell alone. He hates being bothered by people. He admires and uh, you know, cherishes his time to think and read and experiment, and everybody else can go take a, a nosedive off of a cliff, because he just wants to be left alone. So his... Uh, People have emailed me, he's like, you know, Dollar does, you know, so-and-so. They, like, got a picture of him holding a beer. It's like, well, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, a 68-year-old guy that, like, works his ass off in the desert, you know, and, like, doesn't really have any money. I'm pretty sure the guy, if he wants to have, you know, working his, his ass off in the hot desert, if he wants to have a cold beer at the end of the day, who gives a damn? It's like, oh, my God, here's a picture of Eric Dollar drinking a beer. Um, anyway, I have to give thanks to Dollard, and I knew this from... But I never made the connection, but I mean, everything is connected. I mean, the irreducible simplicity of everything is that he, uh, Eric Dollard said, uh, one of the f few things that uh, he admirably said that, you know, that sticks with me, and I've watched basically all his videos and I own all his books, is that he said, you'll never understand electricity without understanding counter space. You'll never understand electrical theory without understanding counter space. His exact words were, it's absolutely impossible to understand electrical theory without understanding counter space. And he's absolutely correct. Uh, if we take the magnet, for example, I mean, I've uh, written the world's first. People can bitch and complain and moan and piss about that. No, you didn't. You know, uh, Faraday, Tesla, Steinmetz, heavy side. No, they didn't. There's none of them that explain magnetism. None of them. None of them have. I'm the first person to have done it. People can think that's boasting all they want, but I have done it. I have done it. They haven't. There's nobody that you can point to that has said, this is what magnetism is, this is what a field is, this is how a magnet works. This... Nobody, nobody did that, not even Tesla did that. Not even Tesla. I praise Tesla endlessly. But there is nothing within the works of Steinmetz, Heaviside, Tesla, Faraday, James Clark Maxwell, that you can point to where they go, this is what a magnet is, this is how it works. None of them ever explained incommensurability or the reciprocating processional hyperboloid or how gyroscopic precession works and what field coherence. None of those people, in their great magnitude of the minds and the works that they have wrought, none of them ever, goddammit, explained what a magnet is, how magnetism works, what it ultimately is, and how none of them. I am the first person to have done that. If you think that's being boastful, guess what? I don't care. I could care less what you think about that. I still did it. I spent countless thousands of hours working on it, and you didn't. Is that boastful? I don't give a damn what you think about that. What is beautiful, and wisdom is its own reward. You see, other people that try to get acclaims for things that they've done, you know, when it comes to wisdom, it's its own reward. The reciprocating processional hyperbola, what actually defines magnetism? The incommensurability of field coherency? It's like, what the hell does that mean? Well, you don't have to understand what incommensurability... If you take someone that is a total oddball like me, well-learned in not only metaphysics, but translates ancient Greek and Pali and Prakrit, and has had a lifelong interest in field theory, and you combine those things, 
what happens and you you know you throw away like countless countless tens of thousands of hours of your time that other people take for granted like doing other things like trying to get rich or laid and dedicate it towards comprehending something as fundamental as uh, cosmic mechanics and how divinely simple it is but not simplex very simple but not simplex acceleration I mean what actually defines a magnet we think well a magnet is a repulsive and it's also a track no it's not all acceleration is not magnetic it's dielectric acceleration well you know we got magnets that attract and if you uh, stick them on like polarity they repel and uh, this is all BS you know we could observe things see what stupid human beings don't get is that observation and reproducible experiments have no connection to the damn uh, explanation like uh, the idiot Einstein yeah I said Einstein is an idiot also Nikola Tesla many 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 times said that Einstein was an idiot Einstein was I uh, got the Nobel Peace Prize for the photoelectric effect now that experiment is not only highly reproducible and uh, uh, Einstein wrote out his assumed explanation for how it worked but his explanation has no connection to reproducing the experiment it's not valid. The ancient Egyptians uh, were able to reproduce some of the most amazing uh, uh, physics phenomena that to even today we don't understand. You know, but they had crazy ass explanations like so and so God was behind it. You know, if I discover something new and I say, well, tiny leprechauns are coming in here and they're coming out of there, it's like, well, he discovered the phenomena, therefore his explanation must be correct. You know, he discovered something. There's no connection there. Discovery and reproducing something has no connection to what someone uh, does or does not do when it comes to explaining it. Specifically about magnetism. All the acceleration that we think is magnetic attraction is not magnetic attraction. I've said this before endlessly. It's dielectric acceleration. The only thing that defines it is the ability of that neodymium iron boron or sumerium cobalt or... Uh, or uh, ferrite magnet is to undergo uh, field coherency. This is why stars uh, go dead and also collapse when they produce enough iron. Then they undergo field coherency. Then uh, all uh, all uh, activity in the stars die, or if they're large enough, they uh, collapse because once you have field coherency on a mass. Of course, I explained black holes really, really simply. It is something that is super massive. I mean, something that, uh, you know, is an enormous mass that has no uh, spatial footprint. It is where acceleration has actually overtoppled um, magnetic divergence. Uh, it's really simple. You know, Mother Nature is, you know, so divinely simplex. All the phenomena in nature that, w that uh, idiots in physics and um, have tried to explain. See, math is not science, nor is it the truth. It is a methodology to reproduce and... Uh, to uh, reify things in uh, their finer points of operation, but it is not an explanation of anything. I mean, I could write out a complex math equation for uh, the uh, the DNA strand of a human being, but it doesn't tell you anything about a human being. Uh, math is no connection to reality, nor to uh, what something is, as far as defining it, nor explaining it. That's something else that people uh, don't get. I mean, everything in Mother Nature is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Everything is force in motion or inertia and acceleration. Even human emotions work that way. We are either impelled or repelled or we're stopped. Human emotions are absolutely no different than the fundamental field mechanics of Mother Nature itself. We are trying to uh, unify uh, the fields of Mother Nature, and they're already unified. If Mother Nature were a person and uh, she could talk, she'd say, you know, why do you want to unify something that's already unified? It's, like us idiot, idiot, stupid ass humans are trying to unify water and ice and steam, and a mother nature is going, you know, what, what the hell is wrong with you? You, you know, you, you demented asshole. It's all water, water, ice and steam. These are just different states of uh, force and motion, and uh, flux variation um, of uh, fundamentally what is, uh, you know. Molecular uh, hydrous oxide, water, 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 steam, ice. You know, we're trying to unify something that's already unified. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It's coherent dielectric acceleration. Field coherency is not additive, it is multiplicative. This is something else. Human beings don't understand uh, fields, they don't understand field coherency. 
They don't understand multiplicative force or inertia fields. What do you mean it's multiplicative? It's like, well, if you take four things and you put them together, what do you have, Johnny? Well, you have four. One, two, three, four. That's additive. When it comes to fields, if they work in unison as a single entity, as they do in a magnet, because the only thing that defines a magnet is field coherency, they're multiplicative. Well, in that case, Johnny, we don't have one and one and one and one equaling four. We have these four items working in unison add up to, say, 16 or 20 or 24. They're multiplicative. There's absolutely no such thing as gravity. Of course, we know, well, this is gravity. You know, something falls or accelerates towards the Earth. Well, obviously, gravity exists. The phenomenon we call gravity is absolutely no different than dielectric acceleration, which you call magnetic attraction. The only difference is field coherency. The only thing that defines a ferrous, a sumerium cobalt, or a neodymium iron boron, or a ferrite, or any other... Um, uh, highly magnetizable, field coherency inducible objects is that they are under, they are able to undergo field coherency and maintain that for a certain or an indefinite period of time. You know, if you take enough dirt the size of the moon, for example, I mean, you can't make it coherent, but you, you have enough of it, it will start to accelerate asteroids and other things, you know, as we can see by evidence on the moon of things that have actually impacted the moon. I mean, ultimately, I don't know how much iron is at the center of the moon, but let's just assume it was old dirt, which of course is obviously not the case. Dust, basalt rocks, you have enough matter, then you induce enough of a field acceleration of that incoherent matter towards itself. The only thing that defines a magnet is it is amazingly small and it has multiplicative field coherency which is rather amazing. Like, oh, you know, you get two large neodymiums, and it'll smash your fingers between them. What's the difference between magnetic acceleration, what you, the stupid human being, calls magnetic attraction and gravity? The answer is there is no goddamn difference. The only thing that defines it is the field coherency, which is multiplicative. You have countless billions and billions of atoms in, say, a one-inch block neodymium iron boron operating with the same geromagnetic precession to accelerate other ferrous objects, whether it's samarium cobalt or iron or sheet steel, towards itself. Then nobody's ever defined a field. There's no branch of science that's ever defined a field. What is a field? It is inertia or ether perturbation. A field has no quantity. This is the other thing that actually confounds science, because science at its very core today is pure goddamn atomism. It thinks that they're magic. They actually think that there are virtual photons going on, say, between magnets. This isn't my belief. This is what these idiots actually say. You can go ahead and read, uh, you know, the books uh, by the uh, the late the late stupid uh, Richard Feynman uh, called QED: Strange Theory of Lightning. All of these idiots, these physicists, they have to quantize everything. Everything is a quantity. It was like, what's happening between Matt? You should type in Feynman on magnetism and watch the YouTube video that this idiot made. The guy wiggles and squirms in his chair like a brain dead, a guppy gasping for air on the land. He doesn't know, and it's okay not to know. But when you pretend you know to other people, that's when you become a real a hole. It's okay not to know, but I can guarantee you one thing people that think they know. They don't go searching for answers to things that they think that they know. Nobody goes looking for their keys, for example, if their keys are sitting right there in front of them. Why would you go looking for them when they're right there? People that think they know the answer to something, they don't go looking for the answer to that thing that they think they know. Modern science and the crap that you've been taught in school and college assumes that we know how magnetism works. That blows people's minds. They're like, there's no way human beings don't know how magnets... They don't. You could go to some of the largest the websites on uh, the internet on Earth that make you know billions of dollars selling ma and making magnets. You can go to their FAQ page. It's like, how do magnetism work? How does it matter? We still don't know. This is a fact. Magnets are here, 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 here. Everywhere there's a magnet. But the... Not a single human being on Earth has ever explained what a field is, how magnetism works, incommensurability, compounded, multiplicative field coherence. Nobody has ever, ever explained that. Until I wrote the book on it, it's not even from Tesla, not from Faraday, not from Steinmetz, not from... You can complain. No, you're not the first person to discover it. Go find me the passage where anybody explains it. I dare you. 
I dare you, go find it in the works of Faraday, Steinmetz, Tesla, Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell. It doesn't exist. I know their works well. I'm sure you don't. Because if you think they explained it, you're dead wrong. They never explain it. I dare you, go find it. I dare you, go find it. And then say, look, you're wrong. You fat, tattooed idiot. Look, here it is right here. Maxwell's explaining magnetism. No, he doesn't. They describe little bits and pieces here and there, but there's not a single person that ever defined magnetism. How it works, what it is, what a field is, none of them did. I'm well into the fourth edition of my book. Ultimately, there's going to be six editions of the book. And that is the legacy I will be leaving. They didn't discover it, I did. Without their help, I can definitely say that I probably would not have discovered all the answers to what magnetism is and how it works. That's the old saying, you stand on the shoulders of giants to see further. That's what I've done. So I'm certainly not going to say that I didn't get help from them. I certainly did. Tes uh, Eric Dollard, Tesla, Faraday, Stein. I got help from all of them. But I found the answers and they did not. Magnetism is divinely simple. I don't need any gratification from any of you people like you know pat on the back you know way to go wisdom is its own reward true knowing and I don't mean empirical knowing which is episteme rather than gnosis or noesis it is its own reward you know I've already been paid and am continuing to be paid not literally being paid in the sense of the bliss and pleasure that it actually brings me in knowing and comprehending that Anyway, I'm uh, working hard on the fourth edition of the book. Uh, my time is limited, and people are always taxing my time. Even people that hate me will admit to that much. So, um, But magnetism, ultimately, you should take pleasure in the fact that the fundamental fields and forces of Mother Nature are so much more simple than you could even dream possible. And modern physics and science has convoluted it into a disgusting, rancid, vile piss disgusting rancid steaming heap of particle atomistic nonsense where they have unicorn farts and magical invisible leprechaun particles jumping and bumping it is literally a cult of bumping particles the cbp that's what i call it the cbp the cult of quantum the cult of bumping particles because to these idiots you know a field has to be reified to them it must be made of something you know because these things are interacting even the four Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They're vectors over a period of time with a resultant effect. But the four Maxwellian field equations never define what a field is. All the simple things that you don't realize. You weren't taught this stuff in school and college. The people that taught you have no damn clue. People that taught me had no damn clue. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I continue to work hard, obviously so. If you like this video and drop me a buck or two, you can give me the middle finger. You can tell me to jump off a cliff. It doesn't matter either way. Whatever makes you happy. Bye.